Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and in this video, I'm going to talk about that how do you create an index column for subgroups of data in Power Query. Now, this is not really a final solution to a problem. This could be an interim solution to the problem that you're trying to solve, especially where you need an index column or a serial number column for subgroups of data. And I've prepared some data in Excel. Why don't we take it from there and solve this particular problem? All right, so I'm in an Excel file that contains a very simple two columnar data set. We have the category and then we have the value here. And when I say that you would like to create an index column for subgroups, here is what I mean to say. So you can see that we have three categories. We have category A and we have category B and then category C. I'd like to create a serial number that starts with one when every single category changes. So we have five values for A. And so I'd like to have one, two, three, four, five for A. That's the serial number that starts with one, ends at the last value. Then I'd like to have four serial numbers, one, two, three, four, four B. And then again, the serial number should start once again, like an index column, which should actually run from first second and third and at number three. Let's just see how can we actually do that in Power Query. I'm just going to take this data to Power Query and just take it from there. All right, so I've loaded the data in Power Query. What I'm going to do now is create a plain vanilla index column. Take a look at the M code that gets generated and use that same M code while I'm trying to make subgroups and serial number for those subgroups. So I'm just going to actually going to go in the add columns tab. In the add columns tab, I have something called as an index column. I'm just going to start creating an index column that starts with one. Once I do that, of course, a new step is added and some M code is also there in the formula bar. Let's just go investigate that. The formula that gets added is table dot add index column. And the first part of this particular formula is the name of the table. In which table are you trying to add an index column? The name of the table, of course, is source. Source simply is the previous step which did not have an index column. So that's the name of the table. And if you move on, it asks you, hey, what's the name of the column that you're trying to create? The name of the column is index, and that's the reason why you, you write an index. Of course, you can change that to any other column as well. And then you can see that we have two times one here, one comma one. The first one actually means that what is your starting number? And the second one actually means that what is the number that it should be incremented by? So at every single time when it moves to the next row, it will increment that by one, and that is nothing but the serial number or the counting. The last part is the data type, which is which data type should I apply? So obviously this has been applied as an integer. The last two parts, which is the data type and the increment are optional inputs and you can actually leave it out and it will still increment by one. So what I'm going to do is for now, I have understood the formula and I'm just going to delete that particular formula and then start to work with Power Query so that I can create the same index column, but the index column is going to be for subgroups of data uh, for A, for B and for C. So let's just delete that. What I'm going to do now is add a grouping to this particular table. So there is something called as grouping, which is group by in the transform tab. I'm just going to click on group by and I'm going to make three groups, one group for A, one group for B and one group for C. And then I add an index column for each one of them. So I go in basic. I'd like to create a group for each category and alongside the category, I'd like to have the entire data of that particular category. I'm just going to call this column as all data in the operations. I'm just going to add uh, all rows and I'm just going to click on OK. And what I get now is a group data for each and every category. If I just maybe click on the side of the table, I'm actually going to take a look at all the rows that belong to A and the entire data for A being fed here. Now, in this particular table, I'd like to create another column, which is going to be an index column that starts with the first row and goes up till the last row. How do I actually do that? Now, remember that we investigated the table dot add index column. I'm actually going to use that uh, for all these three tables that are created right here. So I'm just going to go again to the add columns tab. In the add columns tab, this time I'm just going to make a custom column and write a formula in every single row of this particular column that I create. So let's just make a custom column and the column name doesn't matter. We can call it custom, but the formula that I'm actually going to use is the same uh, formula that I learned it earlier. So table dot add index. And the first part, if you remember of this particular formula was the name of the table. In which table are you trying to create a serial number or an index column? The table is there in this all data column. So I'm just going to click on the all data. That means we have a table here. We have a table here and we have a table here to all of these tables. Go add an index column. Then it says, hey, what's the name of the new column that you're trying to create? Maybe this time I'd like to call it for serial number. So just for testing purposes, I can call this as serial number. And it says, what is the initial value? The initial value is obviously going to be one. And since I said that three parts are good enough, you can leave out last two parts, which are optional parts. So I'm just good for now. I'm just going to say, okay. And it again creates a table, which you can see now. 
And in this table, if I just click on the side of it, at every single table, I now have a serial column that actually starts with the first value and goes up till the last of that. Take a look at table number B, uh, for category B, we have four, and for the last one, we have three. Now you have two options to be able to expand this particular table. First of all is that you can remove these two columns which are redundant and we don't need them now and only open the columns for this particular table. The other option is that we only combine all the columns of all the three tables from this particular column. How do we do that? I'm just going to click on the FX right here and in the FX it just gives me the reference to the previous step which is nothing but added column. From the previous step I only want to pick up all these tables which are there in the custom column. So I'm just going to write the name of the column here which contains three tables and I'd like to work with only those three tables. I press enter and this actually becomes as a list. You can see that it actually becomes as a list which contains three tables. It still has those index columns as you can see. Now I just want to combine these three tables and make it like a single table. So I'm just going to use the formula called table.combine and wrap this around in that formula and commit to this, press enter. What I now get is a single combined table with serial numbers for each and every group which is exactly what I wanted. All right, that's how you add an index column or a serial number column to subgroups of data. Obviously, this was not the final problem that we were trying to solve. This could be an interim solution to the larger problem that you are trying to solve and which is where you need counting from one till the end of the category for subgroups of data and now you have a way to do it. In the end, a quick shout out about my Power Query and my DAX course if you're trying to learn DAX and Power Query right from scratch. Build up your fundamentals first and then build up your skills to the level where you start solving more challenging, more sophisticated problems of your data. I will highly recommend that you take a look at the courses. They are going to be extremely beneficial. If you have any questions around this, please feel free to put them down in the comments and I'll be glad to reply. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.